Hey guys, well today I want to do a review of a knife that I just recently got. I want to say I've had it for about two, three weeks now, and you know, being one arm or you know, having the temporary non use of my right hand uh, makes it a little bit different, difficult to do some of these tasks. And so I haven't been able to put this knife 100% through its paces. I plan to now that my daughter's home, she can help me out a little bit. Uh, but first of all, I just want to kind of show it off and then. If any of you guys have been watching my videos, you know who makes this sheath. Justin Wolf, Greyer Wolf on YouTube. And like I said in my one of my other videos, I try to spread my my expendable dollars around or however you want to say it. I, I buy gear from a lot of different people. Basically I've got a few people who I go to now exclusively. Justin's one of them. For leather, I go to Justin exclusively for leather. Um, Gary Lawson for Kydex, and Malcolm, the Hidden Woodsman, for my haversack type pouches and stuff like that. These folks are my friends, but they also make gear that, I mean, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't buy it. I'm not buying it just because they're my friends, I'm buying it because it's good quality gear. So, anyway, there's the sheath. This is just part of it. The other part's on my belt. It's a nice dangler system. I personally love dangler systems and one of the main reasons is because it gets it out of the way of my hip build, it gets my knife out of the way of the hip build of my pack. Anyway, here's the knife. The person who made this knife for me is Joe Honeycutt. Black Feather Knives, used to be called Primal, uh, Primal Knives, Primal Edge, can't remember. Derek from the Woodsman School used to stock one of his knives. I'm not sure if he still does, or I'm not sure what's going on with that. But anyway, I'm going to give you some uh, specs real quick of this knife. I wrote them down here. Overall, the knife is about 9 and 7 eighths inches long. The blade's about 5 inches long. It's about an inch and 3 sixteenths deep at its, at its deepest point between the edge and the spine. And it's made out of 3 sixteenths 01 steel. The handle is approximately four and three quarters inch thick. The handle across the back, in other words, right between there and there, is about, let's see, it's about uh, an inch and an eighth wide and about seven eighths. I take that back. It's about seven eighths from here to here and about an eighth of an inch from the top the bottom. I requested a, a large beefy handle on this knife. I don't know if my hands are super big or if I just like a super big handle knife, but it's I love it. This is a very, very comfortable knife handle for me. Um, this knife is the PTK, the Pops Tribute knife. So, all right, there's the specs. <clears> 01 <throat> tool steel. This should perform very well if it's been heat treated correctly. And that's basically it. I mean, so long as it's not a defaulty piece of steel and it's been heat treated correctly, this thing should perform very well. And like I said, the handle is just extremely comfortable in my hand. You can see there's a little bit, it, there's a little rise at the end there that kind of locks my hand into place. No matter where I rotate that handle in my hand, it just, it's a very comfortable feel. All right. Let's get to cutting something with this thing, see how she performs. This is a quite a bit larger stick than what I wanted to do this feather stick with, or what you would, what I'm calling a feather stick here. But anyway, the reason that I wanted to do it 
because I wanted to check the spline too. And it's kind of a punky piece of wood too. I need to find another one. And not all wood works with this as far as like trying to make a fuzz stick. At some fuzz. Not all wood works that way, so don't be lulled into thinking that any wood will. Let's find a little better piece. Almost a little on the punky side. And like I was saying, I, I did do the spine on this again. It's got a good spine, it's just the wood is not correct for that method. If I had a mullein stock or something like that, it would work. What I'm doing by this feather stick is I'm gauging different depths of the wood. In other words, I can do really big curls, but I, um, but I can also do you know, fine ones so long as I'm not in the punky part of the piece of wood. But, and I'm basically putting very little pressure on that knife blade, very little. And this is allowing me to, like I said before, test the blade, test how it's going to grab this wood, but also it's uh, uh, testing the handle for me. There are very few tasks that are as hard on my hands as feather sticking. And I think it's just because maybe I got a death grip on the knife or something. I, it's, you know part of my issue, but anyway. And you know, you can, some people do it like this, <laughs> a little bit better than that, but anyway, you get the idea. Just going through the motions, kind of checking it out. Okay, if I don't get this fire, it's not a reflection on the knife. These are some pretty poor feathers. I picked a couple of pretty punky pieces of wood. Therefore, my feathers kind of suffered for that. Ah, darn it. Oxidation on the on the uh, ferro rod. <laughs> and a boot full of snow didn't help either. All right, well, seems like I throw sparks pretty good. Okay, just so you can see the size of this piece of oak, it's got a knot right there. It's about how big it is. Three inches, something like that, I'd say, or closer to two and a half. Three, I'd say. Let's see if I can do this with my gimpy hand. I, I never really need to baton wood like this, except for if I'm making a bow drill fire. My area is not, um, let me fix you guys here. My area is not super, 
it's not like the Pacific Northwest or something like that. So I mean, it's not that big a deal as far as finding standing dead twigs. And then you guys all know I got birch bark, stuff like that. So like I said, really the only reason for me to baton wood is to basically a bow drill set. I really haven't found too many other reasons to do it. Now as far as batoning this oak, I've said it before, it's just a stress test. This metal should be able to go through this no problem. I mean, you know, chisels and stuff like that, or I, I understand they're probably um, tempered differently, but still, I mean, we have tools that will go through oak, and there's no reason why this full tang knife shouldn't go through this piece of oak. <clears throat> and if you look at the split and the knife blade, the knife blade is no longer contacting the wood from what you can see there inside if there's a little bit of a wave or something like that it might be but basically the blade is not contacting that split anymore the knife the back the, the wedge shape of the knife is doing the work okay guys I got my daughter to help me so she's my second arm over here Cash you want to hold on to the knife blade or not, <laughs> not the blade the handle hold on to it tight push down on it Okay, I'll hit it. Let's turn it around. I got it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. You want to beat on it? All right, go ahead. Go ahead. That's not too bad. All right, we'll process a couple more of these down, and then I'll start making feather sticks. Okay. Try to do. <laughs> All right, hit it right up top there. Hit. There you go. Perfect. We split it. We split that. Go over. Go ahead. Perfect. Keep going. Keep going. Dang, another knot. Okay guys, well, thanks to my daughter for being my second hand, there's the knife. Okay, there's no damage to it, there's some marks. <clears throat> this is uh, one of the knots that I went through, the, the main knot. Okay. Once again, would I ever do this out in the field? No, there would be no reason to baton through a piece of oak. But if I do this with this knife, I know I can count on this knife for darn near anything I would ever need a knife to do. Unless I was in some sort of dire, dire situation and I used it improperly. If I can get, if I can do a one stick oak fire with this thing, this is worth the money. Thank you. 
else but no cigar. There we go. She's not 100% dry, I don't think, guys. didn't prep real well as you can see by these ginormous pieces I'm putting on there but the main thing was to get some carbon done today wasn't the best prep work I've ever done in my life, but it got the job done. It took a couple strikes. Um, I'm ready for dinner. <laughs> so I was kind of rushing it there a little bit. But uh, And the, the oak actually wasn't 100% dry. So this wind's really kicking up, really helping it out. Let's go inside and see how well this edge held up to this. Just a few feather sticks and then the oak once Okay, let's see what we got here. Boy, I hear it popping. Not quite as good as when I first started, but still a lot of hair there. You can hear it popping. <laughs> Not quite as good as when I first started, but my leg's still getting bald. <laughs> Okay guys, well there you go. Um, anytime you can take a knife out, beat the heck out of it through a piece of oak, do a one stick, my dog's evidently thirsty, do a one stick fire with oak, do some other feather sticking, stuff like that, and still have a hair shaving edge. I mean that's, <clears throat> that's pretty good in my book. I'm going to keep using this knife, I can't wait for my hand, my other hand to get better so I can really give it a good workout, but Joe really did a good job on this handle and this blade I really like. 
This is more of a, in my opinion, you know, let's just compare it to say for, to the Genesis. The Genesis, in my opinion, is more of a bushcrafter knife. This is more of a, you know, survival or one tool option type knife. It's, you know, just the grind and just everything. I don't think I mentioned it. <clears throat> it's an 18 degree grind with a convex secondary edge, I believe. But anyway, look them up. Joe Honeycutt, Black Feather Knives. Take care, guys.